Hello and welcome as we gather together during our devotion time. Uh, at this week, we begin the first week of Advent, and I will be reading out of the book Spiritual Moments with the Great Hymns by Evelyn Bentz. Our first reading goes over the song Silent Night by Joseph Moore, who lived from 1792 to 1848. The familiar words, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. There are two versions of what happened on December 24th, 1818, the day Silent Night was born in the tiny village of Obendorf near Salzburg, Austria. The basic scene holds in both accounts. The Obendorf Roman Catholic Church of St. Nicholas had a new young priest, Joseph Moore. Version 1 of the Silent Night story starts the evening of December 23rd at an annual Christmas pageant presented by amateur actors from a neighboring town. The party was hosted by an Obendorf businessman who went out of his way to invite the new priest into the village celebration. The warm welcome he received and the utterly primitive reenactment of the Christmas story deeply touched Moore. Not ready for sleep after the celebration, he took a walk up onto a hill overlooking Obendorf. From the view, the wide scope of the dark sky, the lights of the village below, he drank the inspiration for a poem, Silent Night. He walked home and that night wrote out the verses. The next morning, Christmas Eve, he gave the poem to the church organist, composer Franz Gruber, asking for music that would make it work. The tune came quickly. The church organ happened to be broken, so Gruber wrote his arrangement as a duet with guitar accompaniment. Why not sing it tonight? They did. At the Christmas Eve Mass, Moore and Gruber introduced the song to the village. The organ repairman, some say he was at the service, some say he came to the church later on business, spread the song from village to village. Traveling folk singers picked up the song and spread it into Germany, and from there it needed little help making it around the world. Version two of the story has a different focus. Here the poem was born of crisis. In this account, Moore was motivated by necessity as much as inspired by the nativity. On December 24th, the organ broke, throwing the inexperienced 26-year-old priest and the organist into high gear. As planned and practiced, the music for the Christmas Eve service fell apart if the organ fell silent. The service, the liturgical highlight of the winter, was in shambles. What to do now? Moore and Gruber quickly wrote a new song, which they sang as a duet with guitar accompaniment. I'm not sure that it matters which version is true, slow reflection or crash crisis. That December, one way or another, that memorable song was conceived in Joseph Moore's heart. On paper and in performance, Moore and others saw evidence of its birth. And to this day, the results of that birth remain. Does any song strike a truer chord on Christmas Eve? Christ the Savior is born. Think in terms of any believer's spiritual birth, new life in Christ, slow reflection, long incubation, and gentle birth, or dramatic emotional zap. Does the circumstance of the birth matter as much as the evidence of it? For purposes of this application, 
I say, hang the particulars. Here's what, what matters. The spirit wrestled within Joseph Moore and a poem was born. He knew it. His co-worker recognized it. His village heard it. A traveler spread witness of it. And in time, the world was blessed by it. The same can be said of the spirit's work in you or me or our friends or neighbors. A dramatic event isn't evidence of a spiritual birth. If you're looking for evidence of the Spirit's work in your life, look beyond the dramatic. Look for faith. Look for godly fruit. Look for poems worth repeating and songs you can't keep from humming. Let us pray. Lord, I give your Spirit permission to work in my heart and life as you see fit, whether that be in a crisis or dramatic situation, or quietly. Allow me to see evidence of your work, evidence on your terms, not my own. Amen. Thank you for joining me on the first week of Advent, and I will see you next time.